Hello everyone, uh, thanks for getting back to my channel again and I think in my effort to put everything that is useful in front of you and of course uh, that is a day-to-day -day challenge. I'm trying to create my next video. In my circle around I saw one very specific technology that has been here for a really long time, right? the ODBC, the Open Database Connectivity. Microsoft created this open platform for database connectivity in 1992. It has been there for that long, but it's not really well understood. I see that with a lot of friends and specifically today's world when uh, database connectivity and uh, the database tools are becoming again the hot seat of the, the IT world. This time uh, ODBC is resurfacing in case you are using Microsoft systems and tools to make your work around the system, right? If your life around, revolves around database, you must have heard about this. You must have faced some or the other problem getting through ODBC connectivity, right? Now, why is this an open platform and why this was needed? I don't want to get into the details of the whole technology and the history and bore you with that. That's not the intent. The intent is to try and solve as many confusions as possible related to ODBC and be able to possibly answer some questions. So there are many topics that I would like to cover through this whole uh, setup. But then again, I don't want to make a single long video that you're not able to watch. So what I'm going to do is try to create short steps, short videos that will focus on individual problems that we have or individual technologies about ODBC and refer to those, right? Or try to focus on those on every uh, video that I publish on this playlist, right? In this video, I just wanted to cover the very initial steps on how do you want to, what is ODBC, of course, that I said, and uh, a very initial step on how you would actually want to connect to ODBC and why you would want to connect to ODBC first thing, right? Now, ODBC is uh, basically came in as you know an open platform where uh, it provides a middleware per se, right? So you have the connectivity consumer, so you have th the front end uh, tools like Power BI, Tableau, etc., right? And then you have the data sources, the databases that you want to work with. Uh, what Microsoft, the the there were all these tools or all these front-end tools that are there, all the consumers, right, data consumers, as we say, they all try or they have different ways to connect to a database. So there were two things. Either you know how to connect through database through all of these various systems or the different ways they want to do, or you create a single middleware, right? So basically the consumers they don't really know what is happening in between and how the connection is actually going through so you program your consumer software in a certain way right and that becomes agnostic to the way how it is actually connecting to the database so provides you a much better um, you know connectivity solution or much better connectivity uh, with the with the platforms that you actually want to work with right so the developer of the consumers does not really need to know the exact things what is happening right they just need to have the dsn uh, you know or the data source name right now a few things that you need to know when you are doing an odbc connection or creating an odbc connection i'll go through them uh, while i'm giving this demo right a very short demo so if you are wanting to create an ODBC connection, you go to your stat menu and either you can look up or you can just search for ODBC. Right now you have to be really careful, right? And I'll give more details about the drivers and how the drivers actually work in subsequent videos. For this video, let me just tell you that 
ODBC is dependent upon the connecting driver, right? Or something some, that a lot of such data sources like to call as connectors, right? On how ODBC actually connects to their database, how it communicates to database. Now, if you have a 32-bit driver, you would have to open the ODBC 32-bit uh, data source uh, UI. If you have installed a 64-bit driver, you have to select the 64-bit. I can show both just for the sake of understanding. Now, this is my 32-bit driver and I'll try to open the 64-bit driver. Now, if you see this, both the dialog boxes here, right? Uh, I go to the drivers tab here and you will see the difference. There are a number of drivers here, a number of drivers here. There is an overlap where you see the SQL server. Now, there are different versions or not, but the thing is they are uh, different drivers for different, uh, the 34-bit and the 64-bit drivers, right, that are installed. But primarily, the system came when I installed uh, Windows 11 on the system, it came with these, the 32-bit drivers primarily, right? I had to install the 64-bit MySQL connector, which provided me the driver for MySQL ODBC. And this is what I'll be using for this quick demo here, right? Now, what are drivers? I think that that's a very wide scope and that is going to need a lot bigger forum or a video to talk about. So I'll keep that for a different video. For now, we'll just try to see how it works so we have a path to look forward to, okay? So if you have to connect, the first thing you have to do is you have to create a data source name. It's just a fancy word to say that you have a data source, right? You need to connect to something, which is called the data source, right? It's either Oracle or MySQL or whatever database and you're going to provide a name, an identifier, a variable, right, to that, so that you configure everything here and your connector, or the, your, sorry, your consumer, basically just uses that data source name, right, and be agnostic to the connection altogether. It's very easy, it's very simple. So all I need to do is I need to do an add, right, and then I need to select the driver, right, once I select the driver, it is going to ask me for the names, the details, right? Now, I'll go through the details very quickly. Data source name is something that you like to call it. It can be anything, right? So let me just put it, um, I'm just going to call it MySQL DSN, right? You can call it anything that you want. Description field is not really mandatory. It is for you to mention any details or anything. You can leave it blank if you wanted to. Just to show that, I am going to leave it blank, right? Now, for the test purposes, I have installed the MySQL database in my own PC that I'm using this to give demo for. So I'm going to mention localhost here. But ideally, you would have to mention the server IP address here and the port, right? And the username. Just created a username SQL admin and the password. Right? Once you enter that, you will also have a way to select here, right? Which database you actually want to connect. I would connect to the world database, port part of this, you test it get the connection successful. Once you get the connection successful, you do an OK. Well, once you have done OK, you will be able to see your DSN, right? the data source name that comes up here. That is all that we need to do to set up an ODBC connection. right? You can see that this is a 64-bit ODBC connection. right? Now, I have chosen the current front-end tool as Power BI just for the demo purpose here today. Right, it's there's no reason I'm not being selective or anything. It is just that it is uh, Power BI is a Microsoft system and it's much easily uh, available for me to give a demo for. Right, 
Now in Power BI, there are two ways to connect. You can go to do a get data and you can select a MySQL database here right for doing the exact same job so if i select the mysql database you can see right so it'll ask you to install the drivers it'll ask you to do a number of other things and again you have to be ready to set this whole system up for connecting to mysql database well we don't need that right the easy way is to go the odbc way right so all i'm going to do is go to search for odbc select odbc and do a connect that that's it so your power bi is able to go to your computer's odbc and fetch the list i get the mysql dsn right here now if you remember i just created so that this is live you have to understand that this is not something that was there in a cache or something right i do that i do an okay right one time it is going to ask for the username and password connect and there you go Right, so you have all the databases here. All you need to do is select what you want to load. Okay, I'll just try to load this. The world data that comes default with MySQL. And there you go you have the data loaded you have already connected so as you can see with power bi this is a fresh install and i use this fresh install to emphasize the actual problem right if i wanted to connect to mysql the same database i had to configure power power bi i had to install those databases uh, or the connectors that are made for power bi as a connector now if I have ODBC connected, I don't have to worry about that. I could have connected Power BI, I could have connected Tableau, or I could have used the same ODBC connection through a programming language like Python or Java or any other programming language that wanted to connect to this very same database, right? So just a quick thing, guys, I did want to just show how you connect and how you actually want to proceed and why did this ODBC structure or middleware is actually needed, right? It provides you that flexibility, right? Just imagine now if you have created a whole Power BI report and suddenly somebody tries to change the, uh, the, the data source name, right? Or the configuration on the server side. If you were directly connecting to the database you would have to change everywhere in here right your entire power bi report would have changed in subsequent videos i will show you how that impacts and how, what is the amount of changes that are actually needed when you are doing that kind of a change and why that would emphasize what, how odbc actually helps right but in a very short brief the thing is all you need to tell now once you have created based on ODBC, your report, all you have to tell your server manager or the person responsible for configuring your server, that if they have that TSN on the server, that's perfect. Your report is going to work fine, right? Thank you guys. Thank you for listening to me. And uh, uh, please do tell me if you have any specific questions that you want me to answer. If, if there is, I will try to create a video that will answer your questions. If they are short, I'll try to answer them in my comments to you, right? And look, I'll look forward to your comments and post another video with further details on this playlist about ODBC. Thank you.